guys. We have a great show lined up today as we're going to be celebrating Buzzmas as well as talking about COVID-19, potential self-driving cars in Trenton, yeah. and so much more exciting things. So let's hop right into it. Gabby, please give us the news at 7 a.m. Oh, sure thing. I'm Gabby Lutz, and this is your 7 a.m. news update here on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. In international news, Australia has joined the U.S. in the boycott against the Beijing Olympic Games. The U.S. is boycotting the Beijing Olympic Games in 2022 based on concerns for human rights in China. According to BBC.com, Australia has decided to boycott the Games as well, agreeing with the concerns as well as their relationship with China has been quite tense anyway. Zhao Lijin, a Chinese foreign ministry spokesman, claims that the U.S. is violating, quote, political neutrality in sport and said the proposed boycott was, quote, based on lies and rumors, end quote. In national news, in a meeting between the two, President Biden has warned Russian President Putin about what will happen if Russia invades Ukraine. According to CNN.com, yesterday, Biden informed Putin that if Russia did invade Ukraine, America would do what it didn't do in 2014, and the U.S. and other European countries would, quote, respond with strong economic measures, end quote. In local news, women are currently on edge in the Montclair area as there have been two carjackings in the town this month. Two women have been carjacked this month and according to Montclair local news, one woman had been pushed out of her car and the other one was threatened with a gun. The carjacker from the second incident on December 6th was found as he got stuck in traffic and is a 23 year old from Newark. In in the two situations, only days apart from each other are still being investigated and it it is unknown if the events correlated with each other. As for the weather, it is currently 34 degrees, as today will have a high of 44 degrees and a low of 32 degrees with clouds. The air quality is a 45 on the AQI scale, which means the air is good. That was the 7 a.m. news update. Back to you, Isaiah. Wow. I got to be honest, Gabby. I feel informed and I'm ready for my day right now. I'm so glad you do. Wow. (laughs) And now, guys, it is time. It is time for the one and only Rob. Is this your first sports report ever? Uh, Wednesday morning it is. Nice. Hey, all, all things new come on Wednesdays. Go ahead. Exactly. Thanks, man. Um, today in sports, the 76ers play the Hornets tonight. The uh, Nets beat the Mavericks last night, 102 to 119, uh, to 99. The Knicks last night beat the Spurs last night, 121 to 109. And in MSU Sports News, basketball, our basketball team, Men's basketball team plays William Patterson tonight at eight o'clock. At Back eight o'clock? Yes. Nice. I might even watch it. Nice shot. I love. <laughs> <laughs> I love that sound effect. Why is that not on here? We need that on the board. I don't know. Kenny. Need on the board. <laughs> Kenneth. Ugh. Anyways, <laughs> guys, we have some important things to talk about. Our Lord and Savior, known as Amazon, experienced major outages disrupting numerous apps and websites across across the world. So Amazon's cloud service network suffered major outages Tuesday that caused many technical issues for apps. The cloud service provides remote computing services to many governments, universities, companies, and even news outlets such as AP News. As numerous companies and other organizations began reporting issues with Amazon's web service, the company looked to quickly resolve their technical and PR issues. The issue primarily affected Amazon's web service in the eastern United States starting Tuesday morning. Customers trying to book change trips with Delta Airlines had trouble connecting to the airline. And in a statement, they said Delta is quickly working to restore functionality to our Amazon-supported phone lines. Now, Dallas-based Southwest Airlines said they switched to the West Coast servers after some reports of their servers were affected during the outages. Toyota, even. Spokesman Scott Vezin said the company's U.S. East region for dealer services went down, and the company has apps that access inventory data, monthly payment calculators, service bulletins, and other items. And more than 20 apps there were affected. Now, even bigger news, as Instacart, Venmo, Kindle, Roku, and Disney Plus reported issues, and even the one and only McDonald's app. People were struggling to order on their favorite McDonald's app. And even Netflix experienced some droppage in traffic. Now, guys, I heard also, as I was scouting this story, that students across the United States were also affected with Canvas being down. Did you guys experience any of that? You know, I wouldn't be shocked 
I personally didn't experience that, but no. also would I be shocked? <laughs> not as not even the slightest. At no, this not point. at all. Especially the week before finals. Yeah, exactly. The <laughs> week. Well, everybody's on Canvas right now because of finals. So it's like, you know, I'm not shocked that it would have gone down. <laughs> not a chance. I mean, it's tough because obviously we are in finals. So terrible timing for Amazon to not have their stuff together. I mean, how much money do they have to yeah. not have their servers intact, you know? Well, considering Jeff Bezos is one of the richest men on the planet, <laughs> they have a lot of money. <laughs> they do have a little bit of reserve. I imagine that they'd be able to spend a, a couple bucks to fix this problem. Exactly. But, you know, as of now, it seems like most of the apps and servers are back and up and running. So you guys didn't experience any of this? I heard Uber Eats was down. Oh, tough. Oh, that's so yeah. sad face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I, I don't really think I did. But also I might have. But the Montclair Wi-Fi just is not good. So I was also experiencing problems with that. So it could have been the Montclair Wi-Fi that I was experiencing. But it also could have been this. You but, know, I yeah. got to say, a lot of people hate the Montclair Wi-Fi. It's awful. Uh, it's half awful to I me. I have no problem. I have every problem in the world with it. Really? Yes. yes always. Well, me because you can't use Amazon. it. I always have to turn it off my phone. Exactly. What? Yeah. No way. Oh yeah, my phone is always on data. Am I just like <laughs> so used to very slow internet that this is kind of fast to me? That's Maybe. interesting. No, but when it's working, it's fine and it's yeah. good. But when it's not working, which is ninety percent of the time, is that across the university for you, or just in like your dorms? Uh, across the university for me, mainly, mm. mostly in my dorm okay but it doesn't it does in fact happen like when i'm in the school of prom and i'm like why i'm literally in the school of communications why is my wife <laughs> exactly. down? for me um like download downloading things are terrible like they always take really long but for some yeah. reason when i upload things to youtube those things like fly because like at my house when i upload the show available on youtube uh <laughs> it takes two to three hours because they're such big files but here it only takes like 20 minutes Wow, that's yeah. actually impressive. I'm not right? going. When I first did it, I was like, that's got to be fake. Someone messed up the edit. And then I looked, it's like, no, it's solid two hours of people blabbering on air. Wow. Just like well, right now. Um, but we're going to move on to an even bigger story. As Governor Murphy wants all electric self-driving transit system in New Jersey's capital city. And for those who don't know, what's the capital of New Jersey, guys? Trenton. Nice. Well, I'm so for smart. the longest time, I thought it was Newark. Um, Did you it really? Not. Yeah. Um, when on. I was like in kindergarten. Okay. Well, that, that's valid. Oh. But like, see, I mean, what, what was all the beef at the beginning? <laughs> because if you had said, oh, last year, I would have been like, really? That'd be hilarious. We're in college. <laughs> <laughs> like, really? <laughs> I, I found out today that New Jersey is part of the United States. Um, anyways, <laughs> Trenton could get the state's first all electric powered micro transit system with self driving mini buses. The governor's office put out a call for a request of expression of interest, also known as an RFEI, for companies to submit informative proposals to the State Department of Transportation for the design, build out, and operation of future systems. The state is asking for the system be similar to New Jersey or to Jersey City's VIA program that transports residents by minivan within the city. The program is going to be called Trenton Mobility and Opportunity Vehicles Equity System, known as MOVES. Thank goodness they made it an acronym. <laughs> the microtransit system would use a fleet of 100 all electric powered self driving vehicles. They would transport people on demand who call for a ride with a smartphone app or from one of the 60 kiosks that be, are set to be available in Trenton and on the outskirts of the city. Passengers would be dropped off at any other kiosk or at a safe location along roads connecting kiosk locations. Officials have estimated that Trenton moves could serve about 90,000 people. While smaller self-driving microtransit systems are being experimented with in Europe, Brooklyn, and Texas, Trenton Move could help make the state <laughs> an innovation center, Murphy said. Governor Murphy also expressed his excitement for the project, saying this is, the, this is an exciting project with immense potential, and I look forward to the day the first vehicle hits the road. The system is expected to serve 70% of Trenton households that do not have access to a car and would charge a low-cost fare to riders in neighborhoods underserved by public transit should everything go to according plan, it would be the first large-scale urban transit system in America to use self-driving shuttles. Wasn't that fun? Well, you see, 
when I read transit system, I thought it was going to be like self-driving trains. Yeah, that's what I thought too. And I was like, okay, fine. Yeah, it's on it's on the rails. You know, it, it can't really mess up too much. Um, <laughs> it's on the rails. But with the but with the buses, I feel as though that's a little bit scary. It's a, it's definitely scary, yeah, especially since little... you can just um order one on your app. It's literally just Uber. Is there going to be like somebody in there that like? is ready to drive just in case, just in case it, it like happen. i don't know at they least for really... the first couple months of it you know mm-hmm. just so it like gets a hang of itself i just don't know if i would ever be in the state of mind to go into a car without a person driving yeah i don't think i could either no i wouldn't be able to that's yeah. why i'm saying like if it's self-driving but there's somebody in the driver's seat that like could take control if need be i'd be okay with that yeah i feel like there has to be like that's got to be a safety issue I, you know, but it might not be a Maybe safety issue not. in their eyes. I mean, interestingly enough, I saw a video of one of the buses that they plan on using, and they're so small. Like, they fit, oh. like, eight people in it, which is why they're, I guess, making so many of them. But it's very compact, and it's definitely not what I thought it was going to be, but... Well, I guess that's a little bit better, because if somebody... If there was no person driving, like, a big bus... Yeah, that'd be Like, hilarious. a large, like, double-decker bus, I don't <laughs> think I'd be okay. <laughs> like a live Transformer. That would be awful. <laughs> That's be so scary. Yeah, exactly. I would just walk everywhere at that point if exactly. I didn't have a car. I would, yeah, either walk yeah. or electric scooter. A lot of people are electric scootering these yeah. days. I see uh, so many people like All sitting on campus. Yeah, and I'm it's like, it's trippy. I'm, I'm like, how are they there? flying that fast? I'm sitting there and I'm like, do I want to invest? <laughs> like, <laughs> maybe. Because I'm like, I see them flying and I'm like, I wish I could be doing that. It would cut my travel time to class in half. Yes. From my apartment. So maybe I'll invest. Not <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Um, you know what also I've seen is um I saw the other day a kid riding a normal scooter, which was very interesting. Like one of the blue razor scooters. Yeah, you know, I'm not against that either. Yeah, I was just shocked when I saw it. I was I didn't know that was still an option. You know, I guess it is, right? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know where you'd buy it. <laughs> I know that's what I'm saying. I, like I don't know the last time I've seen it know. in a store. I'm going to, I'm going to look it up. Like, can I just buy it? Right. Well, first of all, you could buy it from the razor website. <laughs> Razor.com. Yeah. They have a website. Code. I didn't There's even no know. Code, There's, Please. There's no We're not code. sponsored. We're not sponsored. Um, Amazon has them. Target does have Am- razor scooters. Oh. I still, which I knew mm. they used to when we were younger, but like before, no, they still did. Kohl's has a razor scooter. That's interesting. Before we move on guys, I have to know, uh, do you think a system like this would ever work here for Montclair? Would you, would you be all hands for that? If it was taking me to class, I mean, I'll take anything. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Fair. it wouldn't work. Like, I don't know. There's too many like stuff. Go- there's too much like cars, too much happening on campus. So like, I feel like a, yeah. a self-driving. Mm. There's too many anything. students just walking. I will say yeah. Yeah. there is a lot going on in Trenton too, though. So, yeah, um, I feel like people I feel like people acknowledge crosswalks more in a city than they do at a college. Campus. Are you kidding me? I've never acknowledged a crosswalk in a city. I mean, you got to pick don't, and choose. But also like here, I don't acknowledge crosswalks like at all. <laughs> like not at all. As long as there's room for me to walk. Fair enough. Hey, so, guys, maybe use a crosswalk from time to time. That's going to be our advice today here on the Morning Buzz. But when we come back, we got some more stories and even Buzz Miss stuff, guys. So stay tuned um, and enjoy this song by a very underground artist known as Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Not Michael Jackson. Oh my gosh, we are back here on the morning bus. Uh, guys, it's a great time to be alive. We are spending another day on the giant rock in the sky that turns around many times. I'm your host, Isaiah, joined by Gabby, Gina, and even Rob, my guy. We're going to be talking about now our favorite topic to discuss in the mornings covid because that's fun covid cases are rising rapidly in new jersey schools leading to mandatory 14-day quarantines for some kids the numbers were looking promising in union township public schools in early november with one student reporting a positive covid test across the entire school district for the first week of the month then things started to escalate as 26 cases were among the students in the week of November 11th, and then 37 more following the week, and another 40 for the week of Thanksgiving. By the end of last week, an additional 72 Union Township students had tested positive, according to the district. 
Five schools in the 7,700 student districts switched to half-day schedules after officials consulted with local health departments to assess their options. Union Township Schools Superintendent Scott Taylor said, I know the half days cause problems for many of our parents and guardians. Schedules, we will all be very mindful of this change when we make the decision. Union Township is one of the many New Jersey school districts seeing an alarming spike in positive COVID-19 cases, leading to thousands of students testing positive for the coronavirus or being asked to stay home and quarantine because classmates are sick. Last week, New Jersey schools reported 3,024 new positive student cases and 858 new positive cases among teachers and school staff, according to the state's COVID-19 dashboard. Guys, I thought COVID was done. It's never over. No. It just never ends. The fight never ends. Let me tell you what. <laughs> it just never ends. You have to do the whole show on that accent now? You know what? Maybe I will. All right. Challenge accepted then. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, I'm, kidding. I'm not doing that the whole show. Yeah. <laughs> Simply refusing that one. Tough. All right. Fair enough. So this is concerning, guys. You know, I feel for a while there was a sense of positivity. Now we got new variants and, you know, I just saw an article today this morning where they're saying that the Pfizer vaccine doesn't protect against or partially effective against the Omicron variants. You know, things are looking bleak yet again. You know, that's not good news considering not good. I got the Pfizer vaccine. I got Pfizer all up in me and oh. <laughs> this is what- All up in yeah. Yeah, all up in me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this, it is concerning, you know, especially you see- even in like the high school level, uh, I'm interested to know what the numbers are for Montclair or other universities. Ours are pretty low, though. I think you can actually see yeah, on Montclair's no. website. Oh, yeah, nice. it's sort of up every day. Yeah. Are they accurate though? I'm pretty no. sure they're. Well, I mean, <laughs> no. they might be accurate to the reported cases, exactly. but maybe not to the actual cases. I don't know. I feel like. In my life, like, I don't really deal with as many people who, like, have COVID this year as I did last year. Like, last year, it was, like, every week there was a scare within my friend group. And I was, like, I can't do this anymore. Oh my God. I can't yeah. do this. I can't keep getting tested every day. Like, <laughs> right. Um, But this year, I really don't have that problem as much. Like, I just don't. Knock on wood somewhere, please. Typically. I mean, the semester's almost over. So, yeah. I mean, so this whole semester, unless, it, like, the, the COVID cases just, like, pop up out of nowhere mm -hmm. in the last week of school. I don't really, I don't know. I don't know. I really haven't dealt with it as much. Also, do I see my friends as much? No, because they don't like to come to my apartment. Shouts out my friends. You guys make me sad. <laughs> Shout out to the friends. <laughs> you. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, I, I live with three other girls. So, and we haven't ha really had a problem yet. Yet. So um, that's always good to know. That's good. <laughs> at least you and, and your crew seem to be safe and sound. Um. Yeah, that's a crazy increase, though, where it went from seemingly nothing to like a whole problem. And then now they're shifting to that dual schedule where it's half in person, half online, uh, which I guess is the best alternative if there has to be one and not just fully online. Are you guys um, nervous at all that maybe online schooling might be coming back? I was just going to say, yeah, I think I think in the spring they're going to make an announcement that we're doing. I either hybrid not. or another hybrid year yeah yeah i hope not i can't do that again i know it was awful Terrible. i absolutely hated it i don't pay attention in my zoom classes like we, sometimes my professors like this year they'll be like oh we're gonna be on zoom today because it's da, 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 da. Mm. and we go on zoom and i pay not an ounce of attention 100 percent. like nothing is gonna get done yeah. if i'm on zoom exactly so i'm just like let's not do that <laughs> let's let's not guys i think i think we don't need to <laughs> no uh oh but not hey guys, all. um we're going to move on from COVID and go to another Montclair stool. What? Montclair, Montclair stool. stool. Oh, cannot say that. Montclair school joins partnership to boost students of color. Great news, guys. The Montclair Public School District has teamed up with the National Equity Project's Building Equitable Learning Environments, known as Bell. For those who don't know, Bell is a cohort of 16 districts across the U.S. committed to the overall goal of censoring the well-being of Black, Indigenous, people of color, youth, and communities in our education system. Bell is an intensive two-year program for districts committed to the dream, disrupt, or co-design more equitable, healing-centered, and joyful purposes of school and approaches to teaching, learning, in partnership with people of color students. Uh, we could not be more excited to honor working with the National Equity Project 
that is coming from Dr. Kalisha Morgan, who is the Assistant Superintendent of Equity Curriculum and Instruction. They are truly leaders in this work, and there's no better time to be centering the social, emotional health, and academic success of our students. Montclair's diverse Bell Design team of 20 administrators, teachers, and students who will meet monthly to provide leadership coaching, as well as ongoing in-district meetings and inquiry to support team work. Teams will be working to co-design a system that centers the whole child's well-being and racial equity from the classroom all the way up to the systemic level. That is exciting. That is exciting. Yeah, I, I mean, as a person of color, for those who don't know, um, I do got some Puerto Rican blood in me these days. Uh, this is great to hear because, you know, when I went to school, I went to school with a lot of white people. And not that that is a problem. It's just my experience was significantly different from theirs. And growing up, I wish that there was some options available to me in which I could be, you know, get that opportunity that I felt was missing. Um, so I think this program designed to boost opportunities like that and just give them learning experiences for the future is great. You know, I think that I think every point you made right there is a great point. I think with this, they should also start including um, the true history in history books. That's not going to happen. They Come should, on. though. I think that would be the next step, right? Mm -hmm. Because you look at history books and there is not a lot of truth to them sometimes, or it's like the very like limited truth. And it doesn't really include Black, Indigenous, people of color. You know, it, they, it doesn't. So I feel as though that should be the next step. Absolutely. Um, and hopefully this program works. I'm interested to know what exactly their plan is, because a lot of times you hear about initiatives, but you're not sure what it means. Like, yeah, what is it actually like? What are they actually going to be doing for us other than just having discussions? Because I feel like for the longest time, there's always been discussions. But what comes from them? A lot of the time, nothing. Unfortunately. Exactly. So, I you know, mean, a lot of times the media hypes these things up and then nothing really changes and the more things stay the same and you know I don't know it's just I want to be positive about this but then part of me is just saying well nothing's really going to change for Montclair schools at all it's just going to be business as usual just with the extra meeting or two where people will talk and then nothing gets done you know actions speak louder than words so I think we need to see these things actually happen before we just go and be like yeah it's definitely happening because they're talking about it you know mm -hmm. I think it, I think we need to see it happen for sure guys mm -hmm. and you know here's to hoping Montclair is able to find some kind of solution um but yeah we're gonna take a break and when we come back everyone's favorite buzz miss is back guys it's oh gonna be gosh. talking about the top eight holiday recipes all that and more here on the morning buzz hey guys Dina's segment's coming up too in the first hour Stay tuned. Keep it locked. We got an interview in the second hour. It's going to be a fun show. Uh, we'll be right back. Oh, what a joyous time as it is the most wonderful time of the year. It's the holiday season. And here at the Morning Buzz, we are celebrating with a little thing called 12 Days of Buzzmas. And we're already four days down and day eight has arrived. We're going to be talking about holiday recipes. It's a fun time. So enjoy that with our Actually, before we go to that, any recipes you guys want to share very quickly? I mean, personally, I already shared mine in this feature. So, no. Gina, you're <laughs> up next. I, I need a recipe from you. I don't, I don't really cook a lot of things, like, honestly. But I think, I'm trying to think, like, on Christmas, I guess just, like, basic chocolate chip cookies are Ooh, always a go-to. That's a win. I feel like. Or gingerbread cookies. Oh, oh well, I do, you know. All right, Isaiah, what? you never um, have any good opinions shit. about food. Oh, Gabby, what do you know these days? Oh, I know everything Crystal, these days. Welcome to the show, <laughs> Crystal. Um, we are very happy to have you back. Any food recipes you want to share before we transition to the uh, Buzzmas crew? Hmm. Uh, I'm a foodie, so I kind of like everything. And uh, but something that I love to eat around the holidays. Well, you, this is a very tough decision, but I'm going to say it's like a Mexican dish. Um, they're called tamales. And basically they're just, I'm, you know what I'm talking about. I just yeah, have yeah. something similar. Puerto Ricans have something similar, but yeah, it's basically, 
uh if i'm not mistaken it's like uh what is it corn dough? yeah it's like corn dough right yeah it's like a, it's like it's basically yeah like a corn dough and then you put the sauce of your choice and then you put the meat of your choice some people put cheese some people put chicken pork etc and then you just wrap them up in this like banana yellow. leaf we don't do banana leaves. We do a different type oh, of leaf. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't like banana, banana leaves. What? Yeah, I don't. Crystal. That's oh a whole conversation God. for another yeah. time. We'll, we'll talk about it when we come back, guys. We're going to start 12 Days of Buzzmas. Enjoy it, guys. Welcome back to Bu- Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, man. Hold on, let me back up. That was painful. <clears throat> Welcome back to Buzzmas, everyone. This is the Holiday Spectacular here on The Morning Buzz. Where we're celebrating the 12 days of Buzzmas and today's special day because we are discussing one of my favorite topics and everyone's very controversial topics that they share hot takes about, and that is our top eight holiday food items. I am Isaiah Ramirez, joined by my three very special co-hosts. It's such a great time to have them. Single tears are up single tears. So if everyone wants to introduce themselves. Hi, I am Spooky Madi, but also Madi Zuniga. Hi, I'm Lara. I'm in the middle. Lara in the middle. <laughs> Hi, I'm regular Gabby, also known as Gabby Lutz. With um, an I, I. Yes, Gabby with an I, guys. Gabby and yeah. one B. Gabby's one B. on my left. Maddie's on my right. <laughs> Isaiah true. is in front of me. This is true. Yes um here we are guys it's a holiday season i'm ready for it everyone's ready for it uh who wants to share their first favorite food item oh okay i'll go first <laughs> okay so i make these italian wedding cookies every year mm -hmm. and not to toot my own horn but they are pretty good i make them from scratch as you should basically it's a almond kind of a cookie nice and flaky all that and then it's a lemon glaze on top of it with little sprinkles Ooh. it sounds like we'll have to bring some in Lemon yeah. glaze. Yeah, I, 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 you do yeah. actually. I am forcing you. <laughs> <laughs> my no, no holiday my, party question mark. <laughs> exactly. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, is my, there a holiday party? Yeah. I think we're supposed to have. Oh, one. that's nice. Yeah, my nona used to make them. I'm Jewish. So um, I. Here I am. Cool. Happy Hanukkah. I'm not Jewish. Happy Hanukkah. Oh, I lied. Oh, I'm not Jewish at all. <laughs> I am very far from Jewish. Anyways, the cookies are they hard or are they soft? They're soft. Ah, they're soft. Yeah, then the glaze is called, like a coating to keep them soft. I now is that only cookies. like during the holidays you yeah. guys make it okay yeah cool. so the cool. latest i'd make them end of january okay i made them for one of my friend's moms because she loves them mm. and everyone was eating her cookies she's like these are my cookies like everyone's eating my cookies what if i made them for asked her. you and it's like july um, solid no no it's a no yeah They're you, you gotta be me. honest like not a chance Sad i'll make cri oh, christmas in july i'll make you chocolate Stop chip it. christmas in july i'll make yes. you my famous chocolate chip cookies but no Italian cookies until December. Oh, one final question. Uh, for when you're eating these cookies, what do you pair it with? Is it coffee, milk? Honestly, mm, I prefer maybe coffee, espresso, tea. Okay. You do. You can honestly do anything you want. Eat them by themselves. I here's the thing. If you're eating dry cookies like that, there's something wrong. You gotta like have to something to in splash tea. in. Milk splash, is a cookie's splash, best friend, but also hot cookies. tea. That's true. I hot <gasps> tea and cookies are so good. I love dunking them in my hot tea. I've yes, never dunked do. anything in a tea. Why not? It's You're just, missing I've never out on life. Try it. Yeah. Every night I have a hot tea, which is decaf, As and then should. I put honey and oat milk in it. Sorry. Mm. There it is with the oat milk. I'm sorry. I'm lactose intolerant. Milk and tea is so good. I agree. Like boba. Yeah. Oh, milk tea is great. I love boba. What a time. Bubbles Shall we go so with a bubble tea run at some point this year? Um, I think we should. I've never I've had. <laughs> Maddie, you never had. We have bubble. to talk to Boba. This is moving so far from holiday. <laughs> Boba? Boba? <laughs> no, it's related because it's hey. tea. Exactly. Oh, and true. you know what? Think about this. Asian people are allowed to celebrate holidays too. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. 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 Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, I was trying to figure out where was that going. Right. Uh, <laughs> I was like, like, okay. It's been quite a day. Uh, okay. Moving on. Who wants to go next? Um, I'll go next. Okay. So at my house, we have this traditional dish. Well, not traditional. It's traditional to my mom because she makes it every single Christmas and Thanksgiving. Um, it's like either or. So the first one is uh, pozole. So it's a Mexican um, pork stew. It's really good, but most people would say it's really spicy, but they're wrong. <laughs> it's just good, okay? My spice tolerance is through the earth. Anyway, so uh, basically it's made with hominy beans, 
Uh, how many corn, actually? I just call it beans for some reason. I don't know why. They look like beans to me. Beans, well, beans, if, beans, if you, beans. you call them beans, then they are beans. So how many beans? It looks like a bean. Um, it's a bean. And it's pork shoulder chopped up in cubes. Mm. And then you boil it in really spicy... Um, uh, I was going to say spices. <laughs> Peppers. It's... Uh, I forgot the name of them, but I just know the re- there's like really tiny ones and the really big ones. The big ones are for the color. The small ones are for the spice. And for the bi- for the big ones, we put like five or six because, you know, we want to make it nice and red. And then for the spice, we put like the entire bag because why not? Oh, no. As you should. As, yes. Yeah, exactly. My and are they bell peppers? No. So these are just um, no, they're they're like skinny peppers. Um, dry peppers, basically. Oh, they're chili peppers. Spicy. Yeah. Kind of. And um, so what you do is that you, you cook it and it basically comes out like a stew. Then you're supposed to eat it with a side of tostadas. So to- uh, is anyone Ooh, familiar with a tostada? Bomb. Yes. So basically, it's a flat, crunchy tortilla. That's basically what it is. And you um, you break it, and you dip it like if it's like chips and dip. Oh, and you eat it just like that. And you can use a spoon if you want, because it is very liquidy. You know, it's, it is a stew, but it's preferred to have it with a tostada. And personally, I like to put um, oregano, uh, lime, and I think that's it. And I just mix it up and... Voila. That now, this is so a good. holiday dish. That it is. is a holiday and, but dish. if I asked for it in the summer, would you give it to me? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> but just remember, it's fire, a stew. Fire, fire. Since it's, since it's a spicy stew, you will sweat. It will take all the sweat out of you, so you'll be nice and cool after. Perfect. And it's the way I like it. It's a soup. Sounds good. Yeah. It's really good. My mom, mm. she's like the only person I know that I could actually make it good. Wow. Yeah. High praise for the mom. Yeah, very much. Shout out to my mom. Gabby, you're up next. Her. Ooh, okay, hi. Um, hi so I'm gonna bring it back to cookies, yes. and then maybe later I'll take it away from cookies. But right now I'm gonna bring it back to cookies. Um, if y'all have ever heard of peanut butter blossoms, I have not. Blossoms. Never heard of it. Okay, so it's a peanut butter cookie, and then you press down the middle, and then you put a Hershey Kiss in the center. Ooh. Those are so. And good. then you put them back in the oven, and the Hershey Kiss gets all warm. They're the best when they're right out of the oven because the cookie is warm and the Hershey Kiss is warm and it like melts in mm. your mouth. Ooh. Mm. Ooh, and then like mm. the, the peanut butter cookie has like a sugar layer on top, like on top of it, you know, like mm-hmm. so good. Sounds every good. year sounds have it. Bomb. Me and my grandma make it. My mom has made it a couple times. Oh, so good. It's my mm-hmm. favorite. I, I just that, like right now actually. I have a very big sweet tooth. I would go to town as on like I. twenty of them. Yes, yeah. as you should. As you should. <laughs> treat, you. <laughs> treat yourself. Treat yourself. I will, yes. you know. Uh, I guess I'll go next. So one of the th- uh, holiday recipe that we do, um, for those who don't know, I am Puerto Rican. Uh, so we have this thing called mofongo, and it's, have you guys ever eaten plantains? Yes. I'm not okay. a fan. Love them. Get out. Don't ever speak to me. Ever. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so pretty much it is both sweet and then non-sweet plantains. And then you cook them, and then you mash them up, and then you can, like, form it. And then you can add, um, like, chicken broth or whatever broth you want to do to like, give it extra flavor. And then you, like, season it because it's kind of like a dough at this point. And then you add some meat in there. And then you can put it in the oven to get it hard again. And then, yeah, so that's one. It's normally, like, a side dish, but it's so good. And uh, when I was in Puerto Rico, we had made it for Thanksgiving. And then so it was, like, to the two days after Thanksgiving. So it was, like, this is the final day of leftovers. And, like, my grandma was about to warm it up. And, like, she dropped it on the floor. Um, so I think it was a sign that we had to stop eating mofongo because I was pretty burnt out on the same food. Uh, but yeah, that's one of my favorite dishes, and I would go to town on probably like seven bowls of just that. Wow, I was gonna mm-hmm. say it sounds, it sounds pretty good. tasty. It's yeah. good. It sounds good, and then I heard plantain. Uh, that oh. was the first thing I said. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I can't believe you don't like plantains. I'm not so a fan. Far, I'm really not a fan. Mm. So far, yeah, everything you, sounds good right now. But right. Other, other than that part, it actually sounds really good. He other than you. the entire <laughs> identity of the dish, just it the, sounds just pretty the, good. The, the parts that just make it. <laughs> he had you in the second half. Yeah, yeah, for real. Had me in the first half. I guess, Lara, you can go with your second option. All right, sounds good. So my mom, this is my mom's favorite. So I make walnut cups. It's basically mm-hmm. walnuts chopped up in a little flaky ch- cream cheese crust. So I make the little crust. I put it in little tins. They're mini. Like, they're really tiny. So you can eat, like, ten of them. Perfect. Yeah. That's they're, like, the way the I like to do size. things. Okay. Yeah. I like to just eat a bunch at once. Yeah, but I will never forgive Little Bites for only giving four muffins. <laughs> but they're Sometimes that size. Sometimes they scam me Little with Bites three. are... The brownie oh. ones. Yes, they'd always yeah. be free. Grr. Anyway, Grr. It's fine. They're they're delicious. I had a hookup for little bites though. There's a I had a friend in like elementary school. He used to always have like the big jumbo packs, and I'd go to his house and be like, oh, I'm gonna borrow one of these. You'd be like, Oh, yeah. I'm hungry. Were you gonna do give back? it back? Take all of them. <laughs> yeah. You're just gonna give it back. <laughs> if there's an extra one, I'll give it back to him. 
Uh, There's yeah. never an extra one. That sounds good, though. <laughs> yeah, they're little bite-sized. Um, then with the stuff you put in it, with the walnuts, you chop those up. Uh, it's brown sugar, sugar, all that, vanilla, mix it up. It's a little liquidy. Put them in there, bake them, and sprinkle some powdered sugar on them. Then Call there it a you day. go. That's nice. Right? I don't Sounds good. So you guys do a lot of baking hungry. then? I love to bake. Nice. Yeah. Cool. And so what I'm hearing is you need to bake for us. I think we, yes. <laughs> Yes. yes. Gabby, do you bake? bake together? Um, you know, if I have a recipe in front of me, I can bake. Okay. But I, I I'm not the type of person who can just like <laughs> go for it. it. Go for it. it you know. Mar- think... Mar- Mar- are you are you a baker? I'm or more a of a, a cooker. Oh, okay. Cool. I'm more of a okay. person who, who will make a really good dish. I'm nice. not really into like baking. Fair. I used to have when I was younger. I was going to town on baking, and I was like, one of like my favorite things to do is just bake random things. Mm-hmm. And I was really like. At one point, I was like, maybe I should just be like a baker because I'm having I've, a lot of fun. I've had that thought. Then I got burnt out because one of my other jobs, that's all I did was just bake all day. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. So I get like, <laughs> I got bitter towards the baking community. <laughs> um, the baking. So now I just like to cook. So um, you have beef with Betty Crocker? I got mad <gasps> beef with Betty. Not Betty Crocker. Betty can catch these hands. <laughs> <laughs> but not the Pillsbury, not the Pillsbury Doughboy. No, oh, no. He the would Pillsbury Doughboy, I would kiss him on the mouth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, very risky. Okay. Uh, who's very next for the recipe? <laughs> hey. I'm next. Yes. Yay. Okay, so there's another one. I will butcher this name, but it, it's really good. So it's another spicy dish my mom makes every year. Uh, so this is the second option of what she makes every year. So it's um, camarones a la diabla. Oh. So basically, it's a shrimp dish made with chipotle sauce. But it's nice. really spicy. Like it's, it's the point where people who, that come to my house, they only get one bowl. And then they see me and my sister get a second ball, and they're like, are you insane? <laughs> like, are you okay? And we're just like, yeah, are you okay? Mexicans are just built different, you we know? We are Your built spice different. tolerant is just it's out of control. It's funny because the other people are Mexican. We're just, we just have a higher spice tolerance It's than true. I, I, you know, I've never seen a Mexican that doesn't like spicy food. Hmm. I've actually met one. Because he is half Mexican, half Puerto Rican. There it is. And I told him, it, it's the Puerto it's Rican side it's of it's you. It's the Puerto Rican side. We don't do spice. <laughs> wow. So, um, so this dish. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> wow. So for this dish, wow. um, you basically uh, f- you get a pan. You throw in the shrimp in there. You fry it. And then you get the chipotle. Throw it in there, too. And then you fry it. Oh, no, sorry. I skipped a step. Lots I skipped, of fries. I skipped, like, a whole step. Um the, for the chipotle sauce, you put it in a blender. You throw in the chipotle sauce. You throw in um, my mom likes she, what she likes to do for flavor. She gets uh, we go back to the tostadas. She gets one. She breaks it up and puts it in there, and she puts one more thing. Oh wait, it's water. <laughs> Very <laughs> she puts heavy water, ingredient. Water. Blends it up and then she puts that in the pot. And this time we're not frying it. We're basically just boiling it. It's like you let it mm-hmm. simmer. And with that one, you usually have a side of uh, um, beans and rice. So it's Mexican uh, rice with beans. And it's uh, really, really good. You know? Nice. And it sounds good. It does. It is good. Like People are just like, this is way too spicy. We can't <laughs> and I'm not even a big shrimp person. Like, I can eat it. But I'm not a big shrimp. shrimp person, but that sounds good. Honestly, I have a slight uh, allergy to shrimp, but I still eat it. And you still it. eat wow. two bowls of it? Nice. There's a lot of people that do that, though, with, with shrimp specifically. I mean, as long as my throat doesn't close, we're good. We're I, good. Knew a girl, I knew a girl who was allergic to corn. And she oh, would and she would just eat popcorn all the time. Oh. What? And she was like, "I'm building my tolerance to it." And I was like, "That's not yeah, how that that's works." Not that's how it works. How it works. <laughs> that's me with dairy. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I feel like dairy is a different a different thing. I feel like everybody who I don't know. It's I think I, the world. I have, might a, lot, I have a roommate who's actually tolerant. allergic to dairy. I think I might yeah. be a little bit yeah. too. My throat yeah. starts to close up a little bit. Oh god. But like oh. I'm not gonna die. I'll be fine. That's so sad. Okay. Thing. I'm just uncomfortable. Yeah. Then my stomach hurts. <laughs> <laughs> you just know, casually. Maybe it's time to not. That sounds yeah. like that maybe sounds like college. Okay. Not, okay. Oh wait, we're we're running pretty. We're, 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 we don't have much time left. So we're Gabby, at, go speed ahead. Run. Ah, speed okay. Run. What does it need to be so, speed? I would just casually <laughs> say we got two minutes left. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So basically, I th- this is more of like an appetizer type of thing. Um, it's bacon wrapped dates. So it's mm. it's dates, and they are filled with. My mom does blue cheese. Um, I've seen other recipes with goat cheese. Um, they fill the date with blue cheese in my case, and then they wrap it. And my mom wraps it in bacon, sticks like you know. Um, oh wow, I just hit the mic. Toothpicks, Bonk. so we can like you know pick them up with the toothpick, and then puts them in the oven. And they're so good; they're like caramelized. Oh, 
fun. I just I just eat them. Wow. I just eat I mean them. anything wrapped with bacon is pretty much elite. exactly. They're yeah. so yummy. Yeah. I would and I agree just, on that. I can't yeah. stop I eating them, and then I'm not hungry for dinner by that point because I've eaten <laughs> wow. all the bacon wrapped dates. I feel like once you start caramelizing, I'm like, okay, this sounds like it's gonna be good. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. That yeah, was so yummy. You had me at bacon. <laughs> I missed them. I can't wait to get them again. Well, guys, uh, I'll say mine, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, close out this special edition of Buzz Miss. Um, my last one is uh, <gasps> pastelle, which is very much. I love I'm pastelle. Just gonna Wait, who said that? I did. You did? I love that. You love that? Yes, I had some the other day. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> I have never met a single person that's actually actively said that. Um, yeah, so I that's like fun. Them. I like them a lot. Yeah, that's cool. Hey. Do you like them? I you never know. had them? I've never had them. Do you like I'm tamales or no? I don't like them anymore. Do you want the tamales? Oh wait, guys, that's it. That's the show. Uh, that's been buzz. <laughs> that's been buzz miss. <laughs> Great time. We shared our recipes, holidays, all that fun stuff. Let's, Any last words, guys? Let's wrap it up. So excited for all the food. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> food. Welcome back to the morning buzz on Wednesday. Uh, it's been a spectacular ride. That was buzz miss, guys. Next episode of the morning buzz, which is tomorrow, I believe, is seven days so that will be sporting events very exciting stuff. we <laughs> love sports. Yay, Woo! sports big time sports show absolutely but hey before we get into more sports conversations gina everyone's favorite segment we're just gonna call it we got to think of a new name yeah but G- it, gina's time to shine <laughs> <laughs> Go, Gina. <laughs> Little Nas X posted a star-studded video on his TikTok account over the weekend that seriously impressed his fans. The voiceover parody featured a, f- a few of Little Nas X's famous friends who were gathered together at the Variety Hitmakers brunch in Los Angeles on Saturday. Among the group of artists who made an appearance in the TikTok video are Olivia Rodrigo, Jack Harlow, Tanache Normani, Atina. Chloe Bailey and Avril Lavigne. The musical, the musicians lip synced to the popular sound Bing Bong, which included snippets of the interviews from the popular social media account at Side Talk TikTok, at Side Talk New York City. This is the TikTok version of the Oscar selfie, quote run user, referring to the viral 2014 Ellen DeGeneres <sighs> photo that featured stars such as Meryl Streep, Jennifer Lawrence, and Bradley Cooper. Some users are were excited about Avril Lavigne's appearance in the video. I'm just shocked Avril was in this, one TikTok user commented, adding a crying face emoji. Little Nas X's video has, has so far has earned nearly 39 million views and over 9 million likes. Have you guys seen the video? Yes, I have. It's so fun. It's so fun. I watched that, it numerous times. Yeah. Numerous times? How many yeah. million views did you give that out of the 39? Probably, probably <laughs> a good million. <laughs> nine. <laughs> that was nine million. Um, but no, Gina, I have not seen that that um video. And one thing um people should know about me is that I'm not really with the kids. So all these names like Tanashi, Normani, don't even know who they are. Really? I'm sure. Yeah. I wouldn't say those are kid singers. No. No, no, no. Uh, I mean, I mean, like with the kids, I mean, it's like she's not kid. with the trends. Yeah. Um, like, I'm not with the kids. Like, I'm not with. The are they? Kids. I don't even think they're that trendy of artists either, though. No. Well, Normani was in Fifth Harmony. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. I didn't even know. I that. don't even know that. <laughs> right. Um, but Crystal yeah, opening up TikTok. Right, 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 right. <laughs> right. I gotta, I gotta find the video. So. While wow. I uh, so how would I find this? How would our listeners find type this? Little Just type in little yeah. Sorry, I'm a grandma. Okay? You guys know the hood calls him Doobie. Doobie. <laughs> oh my god, what are these videos that I'm watching? Wait, which one would it be? Uh it should be there's... the one where his face is in like that like purpley background roof. No, Just... no, 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 no. Up up one. Yeah, yeah, that oh, one. Oh, he's wearing like a nice weight. Yeah, you can't play that sound out loud. Uh... Definitely, not. <laughs> Definitely not. But uh as you mentioned, Gina, in this little segment of yours you reference ellen the generous and i have to get this off my chest now i absolutely despise that lady well no, i don't like ellen DeGeneres. i got either. mad i'm so ellen. sad about it too i'm yeah. not even sad because i knew she was shady from the start from the jump she there was a big thing that came out uh, a while back where she, that was basically that she treats her employees like not very well mm-hmm. and um so basically her how she is on air and all that live and all is like very much a facade 
and she's not a very nice person she's also not really nice to the people that she actually like has on the show yeah oh she seems like really mean like, like snarky, snarky and, like yeah. rude mm. I have, a, I, have a, I have a common opinion but what it says i want to confirm that that is the reason why you don't stand you don't like her uh well that just added fuel to the fire and so i was what, happy her reason? she was exposed in that way for me it's just i don't know it's one i didn't find her funny um which that is very is important that. to me that. considering she's a comedian yeah. um the second part is just something about her just didn't connect with me i just did i wasn't vibing with it and then i was like this lady is so annoying to me and i can't pinpoint an exact reason why i just always felt i don't understand why people love her so much i feel that way about uh wendy williams oh yeah i don't her. like wendy williams not like wendy while she's williams. sick guys she's sick no she's no, mean do i look like i was <laughs> in i met her at nork airport when i was 10 years old i saw her in nork airport and I was a small little girl, you know, and my mom recognized her and, and we went up to her and we asked her for a picture. And she, I think she was with her husband, like at the time and her son and, you know, little girl, I'm 10 years old, like, and she's like, no, we're on vacation. No. And as a little girl hearing that, I just started crying Aww. and she's, she's, she's seeing me crying and she just doesn't care. I mean, it's hard because you. I get if you don't want to take a photo. Yeah, but, I was, but like, also such like, a small child. You were ten, so I was trying. traumatized. Yeah, no, I can't. I can't. I can understand Gina's dislike. Yeah. But when it comes to Isaiah's, uh, I think it's just it's not your cup of tea. But exactly. But I, I think despise is a strong word for something that's just not true. Yeah, cup I just of tea. Yeah. like I, I felt like you had like a, you had to have a reason. Isaiah no. despises yeah. a lot of things. Yeah, I see that. I mean, but I love a lot of things. Do you? I do. Like, I don't know. No. I, love, I love my mom, guys. <laughs> Shout out to mom. Oh. Oh. But I'm gonna say something, and I actually uh follow Ellen DeGeneres, and I actually think, or I think I follow the Ellen Show. I should say that, and I actually thought like she's funny. I I like her. She's funny, right? She's but funny. when when the whole scandal broke out of how she um treated her employees, I'm gonna say this that you'd be surprised how many people who are famous on air celebrities whatever you want to call them are actually pretty rude and I say this because I've actually met a few people and it's like bro you are not the person that I see on the screen yes and I get that again I'm not saying everybody but I'm saying like a good amount of them and it's like bro what how could you be one person on air and I get it, it's for the fame for the viewers for the money I get it but ew it's because the hype gets to their head but they get an ego from it and yeah. then the ego just like blows up and everybody's like oh I didn't like them in person <laughs> and it's yeah really so, cool. so when, when they said that she doesn't treat her employees right I was like are, are we really that shocked no yeah it's disappointing though it's it disappointing. is disappointing yeah. yeah for sure but I mean it's it's definitely not shocking although I thought out of all people that Ellen would not be the one to be like that but I mean Nah. What do I know? I, I don't know her. No. <laughs> Ever since like I've come across some people, like literally some people that you guys like well known. For example, like <laughs> so funny. But you know that weatherman that dances? He was like from North Carolina and he went viral. What? Dances? Yeah, it's like and a dances. dancing weatherman. I'm sure some people know what I'm Probably. referring to. I ran into him and I ran into him a couple of times. And you know me being the intern that I am, I'm like smiling, being friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Don't. Don't even acknowledge you. Don't even look at your way. Okay. Oh my sir. gosh. Yeah. And, that's, and that's just one of the many, many experiences I've had. But I'm, I will say then there's other people who are actually super friendly. Yeah. Super like nice. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't matter if you're the clean lady, the intern, mm-hmm. whoever you are. They just, you, they're, they, they're, they're nice. You. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and I, just circling back to the little Nas video, uh, I saw it. Mm. Look, seems boring. Avril Lavigne. <laughs> well, is that really Avril Lavigne? It or is it? What's her name? Melissa. Marissa? Yeah. Melissa. Something like that. Um, uh, is it her? I don't know. For I those guess. who don't know, there's like a rumor saying that Avril Lavigne isn't actually Avril Lavigne. And yeah, that she said she died, and then that her stunt double yeah. is now her. <laughs> I don't know how things that, like that rumor happened. came out years ago. So much information that I don't know, but the kid yeah. that was Pop that culture. was like years ago. That. It was a conspiracy theory because mm. like she had a she had when like back when she was really really popular at the time like like at her prime, mm-hmm. 
she had somebody that would go out and deal with the public for her so she didn't have to do it Uh, they looked exactly like she learned the girl learned how to sing exactly like avril they looked exactly alike she learned how to talk like avril just so she could be her like basically stunt double Um, (laughs) there was was, like the random thing where avril like left the spotlight then came back and she was like completely different with her vibes and everything and people believe that it's her stunt double and that avril actually died oh my god Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's fun it's a fun little theory and there's like pictures of it like of avril now versus avril then and it's like yeah they're the same person but like oh this is different and this is different like how would this be different like it's the same person like you know how did that mall move you know like things like that she she's in she sings right yeah oh, yeah i think i liked one of her songs you probably did skater boy yeah skater boy skater. yeah no, no we're, we're not That's doing it guys we're not doing it <laughs> is that their Jean- problem no i actually don't have problems with mm. she's cool um, oh but God. we have more stuff to get to part of Gina's oh. segment yeah. that involves Netflix. Ooh. Here are all the holiday movies <laughs> that are my like, oh, it's my turn. Like, oh, right? yeah, fine. <laughs> Here are all the holiday movies <laughs> coming slash are new to Netflix this season. Um, so the claw, I'm just gonna go right into it. The Claus family, it's a holiday hating Jules, learns about his family's magical legacy. When his grandfather falls ill and he's the only one who can save Christmas. This um, is on Netflix or was on Netflix on December 1st. Love Hard, a single Los Angeles journalist, jumps on a flight to the East Coast to surprise her crush for the holidays. But she finds out she's been catfished by an equally unlucky in love man. And yes, it's a romantic comedy. Um, This one was November 5th. The Princess Switch 3, Romancizing the Stars. After a priceless relic is stolen, Queen Margaret, Vanessa Hudgens, and Princess Stacey, also Hudgens, and Liz Margaret's lookalike cousin, also Vanessa Hudgens, who teams up with a man from her past to retrieve it. This is November 18th. A boy called Christmas. Ordinary kid Nicholas heads into the snowy north to find his father, who's on the quest to discover a destroyed elf village. This one's November 24th. A castle for Christmas. An author heads to Scotland to buy a small castle of her own, but the current owner doesn't want to sell it to a foreigner. They butt heads, but also manage to touch hearts. This one's November 26. Single all the way, Peter talks to his BFF Nick into joining him for the holidays and faking a relationship, but Peter's mom has other ideas. This is December 2nd. A California Christmas city lights, A year after Kaylee and Joseph fell in love, they're now running a dairy farm and winery, but business and family obligations call him back to the city and threaten to derail their romance. Have you guys seen any of these? I have. I have seen two of them. Yeah. I've what seen have you guys Love seen? Hard. So Same. I saw Love Hard. I actually really liked it. Well, I liked it. It was very good. And then I also just recently oh. watched Single All the Way. Like I think I watched oh. it the day it came out. And I, that was kind of cute. I watched that more in the background. Like I didn't pay super like a lot of attention to it. But I was like, oh, oh. you know, I so, love little romance movies. I know me too. But I haven't seen I've seen both the princess switches. Yeah. And oh, no. the third one, I haven't seen it. <laughs> I but have no interest in it. I know because it's like it's so repetitive. You know that she's gonna play one. the same character. Yeah, like, and the second one was like eh, for me. Yeah. The first one was great. The first I one loved was great. The first one. The and second I love one was Vanessa like, Hudgens. Yeah. I'm a stand for Vanessa. Hudgens. Exactly. <laughs> I think I just didn't like the evil cousin. Oh and yeah. I think she just featured in all of it, and I just don't like that. I just don't like the evil cousin character. I feel like it doesn't add up to the stories. Yeah, it's odd. It just doesn't need to be there. Anymore. Yeah, like exactly. We did two movies. Like the second one was just a little much. Like the third one's gonna be like even... way too much. Yeah, I think I got like five minutes into it, and I was like, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do this. Uh, I I have something on my mind, yeah. Gina. You watched Love Hard. And the oh princess my god, Switch. I already know he's going <laughs> Before you watch Squid Game, oh, what yes. in the world? Oh, wait, How did we get game? here? How? I'm on episode two of Squid You're- Game. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what? Gina, you had like, I was gone for two weeks. It's like four. We How haven't spoken in like two, two weeks. And I, binged what? It in a, I binged it in a day. I did what too. Is, what is happening, Gina? And you can... <laughs> I have to watch it. And then you said Love, Love Hard was a great movie. I like was a great movie. You can't just say great f- was, for everything. It was, it was, guys. It was so it was good. It I was haven't horrible. finished it, so don't spoil it. Thank you. Uh, okay. okay. Well, so, like, if I you guys to want to hear them. more conversations about it, tune into Buzzmas um next week. Yeah. Oh my gosh, right. is it on no. Buzzmas? It's on Buzz. I wish you guys wow. were on the episode because That's you so guys fun. actually watched the movie. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I loved it. Yeah. yeah, it was a good movie, but I want to I want to say great. What it was like I'm... a nice movie, a nice yeah, Christmas nice, movie like, yeah. to play Christmas it in the background. Movie, yeah. Not to always have your full attention, but just playing in the background, you know, those yeah, type of movies. Yeah. Also, can I just say, Gabby, I feel like you watch a lot of TV and a lot of shows. And I say this and I point this I out because I've been watching the same show on replay because I've asked Isaiah to recommend me a show and he doesn't recommend I have. Me I, so I, watch watch Money stuff. I watch a lot of stuff, but let's not forget that I am watching New Girl for the third time. So I, I rewatch a lot. Could be the last time too. Stop. I know. Oh. And I'm just so upset. I'm so mad at it. Teeth and peace and new girls, guys. I'm um, so upset. Well, we do have to head to a break here on WMC Upper Montclair and the morning buzz. That was Buzz Miss. That was Gina's amazing segment that will be named one day. But until then, we're going to head back <laughs> on a quick break and we come back. An interview is lined up, and we're going to talk about crazy stories as we normally do here on the Morning Buzz. Keep it locked. Zoom is muted. That is why she couldn't Um, hear Stephanie, I did a wonderful introduction for you, uh, but you couldn't hear it because I didn't unmute Zoom on my end. That is my (laughs) fault. Apologies. But we're going to start the interview. It was very nice. I introduced you. Uh, Ah. So we're going to jump right into it. What are some of your fears or concerns uh, related to the new variant of COVID-19? So the biggest concern with the new variant. Oh, hold on. Let me. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. You got me. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you perfectly. uh, So my biggest concern right now is that it, based on data out of South Africa, where it was first identified, um, is that it seems to be more contagious, meaning it can spread faster um, than the previous variants. Um, Right now, Delta is still very efficient, um, which is good for the virus and bad for us. But I think if Omicron um, proves to be even more contagious, more transmissible, we're going to continue to see a spike as we go into what is really the most dangerous time of the year for COVID. Uh, Good morning, Dr. Silvera. Uh, I've actually interviewed Dr. Silvera before for one of my projects. And it's interesting. I feel like it's like a full circle moment right now because uh, I had actually interviewed her to get her input when the COVID-19 vaccine became mandated. Mm. I think it was the flu, sh- the flu shot or the COVID-19 um, became mandated for- I think it was COVID. Students. Yeah, I think, yeah, it was COVID for MSU students. And um, so I'm glad to, we can do this again. Uh, and so at, at, going back to my question though, at the start of the pandemic, we went into lockdown and saw the whole world, including MSU, shut down. Well, in parts, right? Yeah. Right. Do you see this happening again? You know, I I really hope we don't. Right now, New Jersey is at almost 70% of the population fully vaccinated, um, which is good. I think when we first started doing the vaccines, that's where we, that was our sort of a target goal. Now that we have more transmissible variants, I think that the goal actually needs to be closer to 85 or 90%, which makes that harder. Um, That said, we do have some other tools in our toolbox now. Um, There are some treatments. for people who are considered high risk, we know that masks work. We know that good ventilation is important. Um, and we can predict how the numbers can go up in different scenarios. So I think that what's really going to come into play here over the next few months in particular is how do we behave? How many people get boosted? How many people who haven't been vaccinated get willing to take that first dose? Because there are pockets in New Jersey, certain towns where the vaccination rates are in the 20, you know, 20% range. So we really need to look at this as a community, a public health issue, and not as an individual health issue, so that we can keep things open. Because I don't think anybody wants to come back in the spring semester to online courses. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, 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 I don't. Well, actually, I'm not coming back. It's my last semester. But oh, I wouldn't want to congratulations. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. But I wouldn't. And can I just say how uh, you know how the recently the list of mispronounced words for the for 2021. Uh, do we want to say Omicron or Omi? What is it? Omic- Omicron? I'm Omicron. saying Omicron. Yeah, apparently there's so, two pronunciations to it. Or Dr. Yeah, Sarah. I believe the uh, the uh, the correct Greek pronunciation, and I'm ah. not Greek, so don't take my word for this entirely. <laughs> is Omicron, but um, it, an acceptable is Omicron. Ah, so it is Omicron. 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 Yeah. Omicron. Ah, the more you know. Just wanted to get that clarification in. Yeah, we're 
everybody's learning the Greek alphabet this year, unfortunately. Sadly, yes. But yes. at least we're learning something, guys. Um, <laughs> we also are starting to learn some troubling details about Omicron, though, as an early study says that the COVID-19 from Pfizer, the vaccine, is losing significant effectiveness against the variants. But three doses of the vaccine were able to neutralize the variant in lab, in lab studies. And the company says two doses may still protect against the disease. What do you think this means for the people obviously vaccinated with um, the Pfizer vaccine, such as myself, and I believe some people even in studio also have the Pfizer vaccine? That's kind of concerning for us. Yeah, it is concerning. I think it's still, unfortunately, right, this is something we are learning as we go. This is still even two years in, new to us. And so lab studies are good, but real life data is better. So there was also an early study out of um, Israel that showed that Pfizer was actually holding up in the real world. And that's really the most important. So its efficacy declined slightly. Um, that said, with the mRNA vaccines, one of the beauties of this type of technology is you can actually swap out components, right? Basically the mRNA vaccine is, it's an ingredients list, right? Here are the instructions on how to make. And it should not take those companies too much time to swap out some of those instructions to be more responsive to these new variants. I think in the meantime, for people who have had the Pfizer vaccine, the best thing we can do, because we know it works regardless of the variant, is wear a tight-fitting mask over your nose and under your chin. Um, I would say going, if you're going to be in a crowded indoor area with people you don't know, so you're going to the mall to do your holiday shopping, I would consider wearing a um, surgical, one of those disposable masks, and then a cloth mask over it, invest in those tight-fitting KN95 or N95 masks, because those are really going to offer you the best protection against any variant. Yeah, and Dr. Severo, I actually wanted to ask you this, because um, earlier you mentioned how there's a good amount of people in New Jersey who aren't vaccinated, and Interesting enough, a couple of months ago, I think it was like either the first or second uh, Senate meeting that Montclair State held, uh, they had um, undisclosed that there's approximately 1,200 unvaccinated students that come to Montclair. And of those 1,200, there's about 200 who live on campus. So my question would be like, with this new variant and how it's more you know, contagious, it's more dangerous, what like should the university be doing more and I and I asked this because quite frankly when I when I knew these numbers I was shocked because I was like well what if I'm standing or what if I'm in the classroom with someone who's not vaccinated and I don't know that and I would I would like to though so that I can be extra cautious I'm already cautious but extra cautious you know like really pinch that that mask really use that yep. hand sanitizer all that good stuff right so my question is like yeah so should the university be doing more for these people who aren't vaccinated with these new variants so, you know, this is both a public health and a legal question, right? So in New Jersey, you are legally allowed to ask for exemptions. Um, how those exemptions are approved, um, there's a little bit of leeway on that. I would love to see, you know, 95% plus of the entire MSU population, students, faculty, and staff vaccinated. I think we have a pretty good number of people who are vaccinated. And I think the number of cases on campus shows that we actually have been doing as a community really well. So I, I know I'm one of the people, I probably, I may have pulled one of you over, like the mask goes over your nose, right? And I get the <laughs> eye rolls. But at the same time, I wanna very publicly say that we have actually all pulled together in a, in a really good way. Classes have not been shut down. Case rates have been relatively low. They've come up a little bit after Thanksgiving, which we expected, um, but I think that we, we can continue to do a good job on this. Um, I would really, I, I think that we probably should be continuing to encourage people who have not gotten vaccinated to get vaccinated. I would love for anybody who has questions about the vaccine, who is unvaccinated, um, if they're just hesitant because they're scared or they're, you know, have heard some piece of information and they're saying, oh no, I don't want to get it because fertility or right, whatever reason they've heard, to talk to somebody. I mean, I'm, I'm a member of the Department of Public Health on campus. We are all more than happy to answer your questions as are a number of other community members. So I think 
yes, I would love to see those numbers higher, but in the meantime, and because we cannot legally disclose who is, who is not vaccinated. Mm -hmm. um, so we're not going to put like, you know, the scarlet U for unvaccinated <laughs> on your chest. Um, I, I think what we have to do is all just be really diligent and mindful and careful, right? So, you know, in my classrooms, we keep the windows open because good ventilation matters. Mm, I like that. I should, I should start telling my professors. <laughs> One of my uh, professors did it, actually. Oh. He leaves like the door open and all the windows open. It's very cold, but <laughs> yes. I understand why he's doing it. Yeah, uh, we it totally bundle up. Yeah. But it actually, believe it or not, <laughs> ventilation and masking are probably two of the best tools we have to prevent transmission. Absolutely. Uh, I'm interested to know, uh, last week we had a story about the COVID-19 antiviral pills. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. from your perspective, you know, uh, there seems to be a lot of controversy within there where some people have cited pregnancy issues that could occur from the pill being taken. And I'm wondering what are your thoughts on taking a pill instead of getting a shot? So is this, you're talking about the, the Merck and Pfizer to treat it? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I am always a fan of prevention rather than treatment, right? That's what public health is all about. We, we, I would rather people not get sick at all than try to treat them after they are. Um, in terms of the long-term impact on pregnancy, fertility, et cetera, again, we're gonna need more data to see what those potential effects are, but we do have an analogous treatment, which is Tamiflu, right? So with Tamiflu, it's an antiviral. If you get treated within the first 24 to 48 hours, it doesn't cure you, but it reduces your symptoms and it gives your body a chance to recover quicker. Um, so I think there is evidence that these can be really important tools. I would just rather people get vaccinated and yeah. reduce the risk <laughs> of getting sick. Um, and what I will say is for people who have been vaccinated, who are getting what you know they're calling these breakthrough cases, they're getting milder symptoms and they're not sick for as long on average, right? That's not necessarily true for people who are over 65 or if you are black, Latinx, indigenous, I'll say 45, 50. Um, so, cause there's some different risk factors there, but get the vaccine, get boosted, right? Where if you're eligible, do those things, wear your mask, stay in good ventilated areas, you know, don't, you know, just start, you know, going out to a club and randomly making out with somebody on New Year's Eve. Cause like the ball <laughs> dropped, like this is oh, not the time no. for that. It's not the time for that. Like pick one person and just stick there, right? Um, All right. We, we want to reduce the risk rather than treating people after they're sick, right? Because we don't know what the long-term impact that having COVID is going to have on bodies and even young bodies, right? I think a lot of young people don't realize, they say, well, I, I, I had it and I got better. But even for people in their 30s and 40s, we're seeing cardiovascular impact of COVID. And we also know that the beginnings of heart disease start in your 20s. And so if COVID is impacting your cardiovascular system at the same time that those risk factors for heart disease are coming into play, we don't know what this is gonna to do to your bodies in 20, 30, 40 years. So let's just try to prevent the transmission. That's really the way to go. Absolutely. Um, so yesterday there was a story that came out from New York City where the governor is gonna be mandating COVID-19 for all private sector workers. And interestingly, when I heard that, I couldn't help but get reminded of a lot of people making fake vaccination cards in order to continue working. I know there is a controversy in the NFL where a player had somehow got a fake vaccination card and then was caught by it because he didn't pay his chef. That's a different story for a different time. But I'm interested to know, do you think that's going to be a more common thing where people are still going to refuse to get vaccinated and find try to find loopholes in order to prevent themselves from getting the shot. So yes, right. Anytime, anytime there's any rule, there is going to be somebody who is going to try to find a way around the rule. Um, that doesn't mean we don't create rules, right? Because the vast majority of people are going to do the right things. Um, there are also ways to check that, right? So when you you have your vaccine card, but we can all, you can double check, right? Everybody in New Jersey, if you don't have the app, it's called Docket, it's Excelsior Pass in New York. You can't fake that unless, I don't know, maybe if you're a computer hacker, I don't have time to try to figure that out. Um, so, you know, maybe it's not requiring a card which somebody can easily forge or more easily forge and requiring uh, <clears throat> the system that is directly linked into the State Department of Health system and into medical records. So I think there are 
yes, there are going to be people who are going to try to fake it. Um, but I think there are ways to put checks on that. And I think that while we're requiring this, I think we also need to continue with the public health message of why are we requiring it? Um, you know, I know I've gone out to eat in New York. I feel much safer going into a restaurant in New York City than I do in New Jersey. I, I don't eat indoors in New Jersey. Really? Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. And I, it, it makes sense, though, right? Because Dr. Severa, uh this is what you do. So yeah. you, you have a well understanding of everything. This is, this is your field. And that's interesting because I actually, I go out to eat all the time and yeah, <laughs> maybe, I'm maybe I should second guess myself right now. <laughs> right. I will say I did eat indoors during the summer a couple of times. Um, but right now the, in the past two weeks, the case rate has doubled in New Jersey. Um, it's almost a, a straight line up if you look at the curve. And so you know, as, as a family, we have decided, you know, we can order in and eat in our house. Um, I feel safer. I, I have some high risk family members. And so, you know, for us, that's what we do. And when I have eaten indoors, I keep my mask on unless I'm eating, right? You're, you're breathing air with other people and I don't know everybody else's vaccination status, right? So think about it. it it's no different than if you're in a classroom and if you don't know their vaccine status and you want to be more concerned, but now you're outside in a restaurant. You have no way of knowing who might be sick, who might be vaccinated, who may not. Right. And I think kind of just to to wrap up a little bit uh, right now, like you said, the cases have doubled up and this new variant is kind of making people, those who do take it serious, kind of panic, kind of like, oh, a little bit frazzle dazzled <laughs> because <laughs> the holidays are coming up. And so like the cold winter, like it's, it's winter time. So you're cold, you're getting the, the sniffles and all that good, yep. all that good stuff. So <laughs> just to kind of recap, what, what are things that us students, children, adults, just anybody should continue to do and can probably even and maybe new things they can implement to just kind of stay safe, especially in these holiday seasons? So again, I, I'll just say, you know, if you haven't been vaccinated, get vaccinated. If you're eligible for the booster, get the booster. If you had J&J &J and it's been more than two months, get your second dose. Absolutely, 100% should do that. Um, continue to wear our masks indoors. Um, and I think if you're gonna be gathering with family, which I think we all want to do, something as simple as, you know, opening a window or two, right? Get a little bit of cross ventilation, maybe give everybody holiday sweaters so that they don't complain about how cold they are. Um, <laughs> that all will, will help. And then really be thoughtful about who you interact with and how. And I would recommend for people who live on campus, getting a test before you go home for the holidays, but also getting a test before you come back to campus. We saw in September, after everybody came back, a pretty significant spike in the number of cases on campus. Um, it wasn't so much that we had to change our policy on campus, but we need to be really careful coming back in the, in the, for the spring semester, which is really, let's face it, the winter semester. It's freezing in January. Um, so let's be mindful of that. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming here, Stephanie. Dr. Stephanie Savar. Uh, we appreciate you so much for you know letting us know more information, keeping us safer day in and day out. And we are going to head to a break. Once again, thank you for coming here on The Morning Buzz. When we come back, we're going to talk some more news and get into some silly stuff as we normally do towards the later half of our show. Stay tuned for The Morning Buzz. Keep both eyes on the road, guys. And, you know, as we get closer to the end of the semester, everyone is sleep deprived. So please, when you are driving, drink a coffee before you get into the car. Maybe take a nap. Do something because streets are dangerous. Yeah, the roads are a dangerous place, guys. But before we get into more stuff we have a newscast to deliver gabby do you have it prepared i do have a newscast so i am gabby lutz and this is your 8 a.m news update here on 90.3 wmsc upper montclair in international news australia has joined the u.s in the boycott against the beijing olympics the u.s is boycotting the beijing olympic games in 2022 based on concerns for human rights in china According to BBC.com, Australia has decided to boycott the games as well, agreeing with the concerns, as well as the relationship with China has been quite tense anyway. Zhao Lijin, a Chinese foreign ministry spokesman, claims that the U.S. is violating, quote, political neutrality in sport, end quote, and said the proposed boycott was, quote, based on lies and rumors, once again, end quote. 
In national news, in a meeting between the two, President Biden has warned Russian President Putin about what will happen if Russia invades Ukraine. According to CNN.com, Yesterday, Biden informed Putin that if Russia did invade Ukraine, America would do what it didn't in 2014, and the U.S. and other European countries would, quote, respond with strong economic measures, end quote. In local news, women are currently on edge in the Montclair area, as there have been two carjackings in the town this month. Two women have been carjacked this month, and according to Montclair local news, one woman had been pushed out of her car, and the other had been threatened with a gun. The carjacker from the second incident with the gun on December 6th was found as he got stuck in traffic and is a 23-year-old from Newark. The two situations, only days apart from each other, are still being investigated, and it is unknown if the events correlated with each other. As for the weather, it is currently, let's take a quick, it is currently 36 degrees today, as it will be a high of 44 degrees and a low of 32 degrees with clouds. The air quality is a 45 on the AQI scale, which means the air was good. That was the 8 a.m. news update. Back to you, Isaiah. Thank you so much, Gabby. I'm informed. Rob, sports, please. Got you. <laughs> Today's sports is 76 years Rob, please, sports. Oh, we can't actually hear. Rob. What? Oh, I think I heard something, Rob. Go for it. Oh, okay, cool. Today's sports, the 76ers play the Hornets tonight. The Nets play the, play, beat the Mavericks last night. 102 to 99, and the Knicks last night beat the Spurs 121 to 109. Also, in MSU news, our basketball team plays William Patterson tonight at 8 o'clock. Back to you, buddy. Thanks, Rob, for sports. That was great. But now we, I think before we get back to the weird stories, I think it's important that we do talk at least a little bit about the troubles going on in the ukraine and russia right now guys so as you mentioned gabby in your wonderful news news report that the u.s is preparing uh, strong economic and other measures if things continue to go the way they are and should russia attack the ukraine at any point uh they had like a video conference between obviously president biden and vladimir putin who is also the president of russia um this is a scary situation because more than ninety thousand russian troops are believed to be near the ukraine borders right now and they continue to actually gather more and if you're putting you know if you think about it that clearly they're preparing something um which is most likely an attack at some point on the ukraine guys it's a scary time to be to be a part of this situation going on. Russia's always in the news for something. And this time it seems to be escalating very quickly. You know, I, I feel like this, I feel like this is always a thing. And where the there's always a country that goes into another country when they shouldn't be. Um, and then the US gets involved, right? Because you know, that's what we do. We get involved. And in this situation, I think it's good that we're getting involved. You know, um, we do have a great military <laughs> and you know ukraine probably does not have as good of a military set up as we do so i feel as though it's it's good that not only the u.s but other european countries will um are prepared to fight a little bit of a fight with russia if they do invade ukraine yeah uh like i saw a video the other day where it was some type of representative of the ukraine and they were saying <laughs> you know we are prepared for an invasion from russia we uh we don't need your soldiers from your countries is what the guy was saying we just need your weaponry your resources your technology um so it seems like even on the ukrainian side that they are prepared for the worst case scenario and then during that video um they have obviously like an article that goes along with it and they were saying that one of russia's biggest problems with the ukraine right now is that they don't want them to be part of nato and I thought that was very odd because I'm not sure what the reason was for that, where they are so adamant that the Ukraine cannot be part of NATO. And there's been discussions of Ukraine trying to be part of it and Russia is not having it. So that has been one of the main topic points on Russia's side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, there's always going to be something that somebody doesn't like. And I feel like Russia, personally, I feel like Russia just needs to leave them alone. <laughs> As simple as that might sound, world, right? in a perfect world, I think they just need to leave, leave them alone. And you know what? If they if they want to be a part of NATO, let them be a part of NATO. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like it's I feel like it's a very simple answer, right? But I mean, unfortunately, it's not that simple. But yeah. I feel like it should be that simple, right? 
Yeah. Uh, do you guys, what do you think the, should like, I don't know, should there be an interaction between both countries? What, what do you think the effect over here would be? Yeah, if if any at all. Here. Oh, I mean, for light terms, I feel like if this goes through and this all happens, there is going to be problems with the Russia and the US. I mean, there's always little things here or there, but I definitely feel as though Russia is not going to be happy with us and we're not going to be happy with Russia. And I don't know what that means for the future, but it's probably not the best. Probably not. And I feel like we continue to live in this world of like kind of on edge a little bit with Russia. That seems to just be the never ending story. Um, so hopefully they, you know, withdraw 90,000 troops um, and then they just, you know, they live their Russian life and let Ukrainians live their lives because at the end of the day, the world does not need more bloodshed when they, we're in the middle of a pandemic right now. So on that note, we are going to try to switch it up a little bit, move on to something a little more relaxing. Uh, Crystal, you're a huge Marvel fan. You love all the superheroes and, and all that jazz. So why don't you give us our first story? Oh, yeah. Mm. So stoked for this story. <laughs> uh, Shang Shai and the, and the Legend of the Ten Rings director Dustin Daniel Crenton is staying in the Marvel fold with the filmmaker signing an overall deal with Marvel Studios and Hulu's Onyx Collective. Collective. The deal allows him to produce projects for television for both. Cretton is also developing a sequel to Shang Chi, the well-regarded superhero movie that debuted in September and started Sim Simu Liu. Cretton will return to write and direct the sequel and is also working on a new Marvel Cinematic Universe series for Disney Plus as part of his overall deal. Shang Chi stands as the highest grossing domestic film of 2021 with 224.5 million dollars as part of a 431.9 million dollars global global haul isn't that exciting guys um very exciting I, i'm gonna ask a question that i already know the answer to how <laughs> many people have seen shang chi here i saw half of it but it was a it was a late night and i fell asleep you only saw half. um gina i know you watch every movie ever have you seen it <laughs> i know <laughs> yeah, absolutely gonna say not. No. i was too busy watching love hard with nina dobrev <laughs> nothing wrong with that Do yeah hate. Okay. seriously uh here's the thing you know what's interesting about that movie i hate to take credit away from shang chi i'll get back to it but nina dobrev in that movie i felt was one of the weaker parts really oh, yeah you know, i can agree i think the 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 best part in the movie was what's his face Jimmy Wong. Yeah. yeah. I loved him. I think he was the, he yeah, was he was so the best. Fun. He was, you He's know, good character. he was, I think for, I think that one that was one of his first lead roles, I think for the first time, especially because he's a comedian. I like his stand up for, you know, I feel sometimes it's a lot of the same jokes, but overall, I thought it was like a pretty decent performance. I mean, I thought he did great. Yeah. I think he played the part well. Definitely, I definitely played a catfish. I was falling in love with him as Nina Dobrev was falling in love with him. The scented yes. candles. You know, the uh, scented he candles. made one for his <laughs> gore. Pop. That was so, <laughs> so sweet. Uh, so sad, guys. Um, yes, I, you know, I think that's the craziest thing is I actually watched that whole movie beginning to end. Yes, as you should. Mm -hmm. As I should. Uh, anyways, love back to Shang-Chi. Anyways. I've seen Shang-Chi. And before I even saw Shang-Chi, I actually listened to the soundtrack because I was like, I'm not going to the theaters to watch it. I don't have time for that. Uh, and the soundtrack was so good. So I was like, oh, maybe the movie will be pretty good. And then I saw, I listened to this podcast and they tore the movie apart. They're like, this is the worst movie ever. It's so bad. How don't watch they? it. And then I was like, oh no. Normally like I agree with their opinions. But then in my mind, I said, I have to make my own opinion. I can't just take their word for it. So I went into the movie. I was like, this movie's going to be terrible. And then when I'm watching it, I was like, okay, hold on a second. Th this might be honest. And I actually enjoyed the whole movie. Uh, I thought it was a really fun movie. Definitely one of the better Marvel movies over the past few attempts of Marvel movies. Uh, I was definitely burnt out on the whole superhero genre. And then this movie, um, you know, I wouldn't say it brought me back to wanting to watch more Marvel movies, but it was definitely a fun movie. 
and it's easy to watch and it's you know, if you're not like a huge marvel person you could just put it on the background yeah and be like oh that's a cool action scene and then just go back to like next time i said whatever crystal <laughs> i know. hate marvel <laughs> and you know um i'm gonna butcher his name so bad maybe simu just, simu just call him simu Lu? yeah just call him simu simu he wow i love him he's in one of my um favorite sitcoms kim's convenience. convenience let's go yes! i love that show and he's literally one of my top favorite characters Hilarious. in the show he's yes. so funny Which he's john so is adorable. amazing he's the brother he's john oh he's fine he's so fine he's right so Chris fine like guys. i don't care <laughs> yeah i was like I, I i've seen that show i've seen that show yes. and i i like it but he's i was beautiful thinking. I was confused. I like the dad. He's funny. Yeah. Oh, the dad's so that's funny hilarious. in that show. The um, parents are, I think, one of the highlights of that show. Of course they are. Well, course they, they're just so funny. You know. Um, Janet's all right. What? Janet's okay. Yeah. No, I like Janet. I like yeah, all cool. of the. I don't yeah. dislike any of the characters in that. Show. No. Um, I actually but, just like. I um. I think the brother is fine, but I just I don't I don't like him. Well, his yeah. character is kind of like a doofus. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I haven't heard that word in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say idiot, and I was no, like, I feel like yeah. I say idiot a lot. Um. Yeah, no, he is, but I mean, him and Sharon are my favorite little couple. They're so funny. Amaz. <laughs> I love Sharon. <laughs> um, wild. Wait, did you see the newest season? Yes, I did. Mm. I did. He's a piece to that relationship. I've seen it all. Spoiler alert, guys. You didn't need to give them a spoiler, you know. Uh, well, it is what <laughs> but, it is. But yeah, so when I saw that he was in this movie, you know. Uh, I was like, wow, okay. And then I'm watching with the beginning of the movie and I'm like, oh, I can really get into this. And then I fell asleep and I was really Aww. upset that I fell asleep. Uh, so I need to go back and actually fully watch it. Give it a shot. Because it was going really well. I was just, it was a long night. I was tired. Uh, but... I, I think it's a fun movie. Um, When I say it's like a 10 out of 10, no. It's like a, I'll give it like a 9.5. I actually really liked it. I can't wow. even pretend to try to hate it. It That's was very a pretty enjoyable. good score, I'd say. Yeah. I mean, it I, was better than Love Hard be... to me. Um, see, so, I love romantic comedy. See, here's the thing, Gina. Please do me a favor. Do you have Disney Plus? No, I don't. <laughs> do you, you have you got a computer at least? Search a free online movie or whatever that is. Um, I remember the days. What was it? Movies 23 is what it used yeah. to be. Yeah, not movies one, two, three as well. I don't recall. We don't I don't partic- participate in those actions. And illegal activities. Oh, my legal. bad. So sad for you. <laughs> You're not really living, Crystal. Um, but we're gonna move on, guys. <laughs> uh anyways, all right, Gina, watch it someday you're never gonna watch it Why am I oh not? gina not. just another man telling you what you should I do know. gina <laughs> well um that on good. that note that? Drake went there. withdrew his two grammy nominations as drake has withdrawn both of them from this year's grammys guys Seemingly without explanation as well, the 35-year-old pulled his two nominations he'd received with reports claiming that it was a decision made by Drake and his management team. Wow. Last month, it was announced that Drake had tallied two nominations for next year's uh, Grammy Awards for the Best Rap Performance and Best Rap Album. However, he was missing from the big three categories, including Album of the Year. Upon its release, Certified Lover Boy debuted at number one on Billboard charts with the album marking the biggest sales last week and a year time with 613,000 units with 744 million streams in the U.S. alone. It also broke Spotify's record for most streams in a single day. Why wow. would you, why would you withdraw Grammy nominations? Yeah, that was just, especially rec- like album of the year. No, yeah. he didn't get album of the year. Oh, well, no. yeah. I think maybe that's why he, he felt slighted. But he, but he was up what for best get? rap performance and best rap album. That's yeah. still like a best album. Like, why? Would I know you, that's yeah. interesting. Well, I guess he's probably already won those two. He said, so. he said, I got enough awards. Right? He's like, yeah, I don't I'm feel done. like doing this. I don't feel like doing this no more. But this is all like spe- speculations, right? Like we don't actually know. We don't know his actual reasoning. No, we don't. We, all we know is that he withdrew his nomination. Let me just call him real quick. All right. Um, <laughs> look at that formation. Crystal casually pulling up Drake's number. Right? Uh, on Drake, FaceTime too. Why too, you, too many? Oh, yeah. he said you don't got more space in his. Oh, uh, uh, the mantle is too small. Yeah. He got needs it, to build it, a it. new little cabinet <laughs> for him. Okay, all right, all right, all right. It's true. He no, but this a this trophy like, room, you know? Yeah, this is actually like kind of like interesting because obviously sure. you're an artist. I mean, you don't really need the awards, but it's nice. But after getting so many, I can see how it'd be like, all right, I want to challenge. Just, what if he just has something against the Grammys? I feel like Could that's be. it, like something Come about on. it. I mean, maybe I the way know. they give awards, like sometimes they don't like 
not everyone yeah. agrees like who gets the award sometimes it's very controversial that's why people mm-hmm. don't really like the award shows because they just kind of pick yeah i feel like they just like they pull the they pull the winner out of a hat like i never <laughs> agree with what, what they say like, right and you know something funny though i yet to hear his lover boys oh. what yeah, I yeah, know. No, I actually me neither. Yeah. Are you kidding? I, I heard really like two songs it. from the album. I heard like one. What is going like, on? I'm I not just, a big I've seen the cover. Oh, come <laughs> um, on. Some of us are busy. Some of us have bills to pay. I yeah, you know I pay bills and listen to my AirPod for eight I hours. I pay my bills. Which is my why bills my pay. Uh, um, Walmart. Exactly. Walmart. One Walmart. of your employees is listening music while handling my. Literally clothing. everyone is wearing AirPods. So I know. Yeah, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's why they take so so long to restart the show. <laughs> hey, I don't work in that department. Yeah. That's not me. That's why it what, takes so long. What's the department then, Isaiah? He could be making chickens. He makes chickens. Making chickens. Rotisserie chickens. You make the rotisserie Is that why they chicken? taste so... I don't season Is that them. why they taste they, so every, Okay, l- let me expose <laughs> Walmart, guys. All, everything's... Walmart. Not, I don't no, if you're going to expose them, make it a TikTok series so we can all tune in. You can go oh around. I think that was the funniest thing. Someone's like, exposing Panera. We microwave our soups. I'm like, no, no, no. Uh, like, yeah, yeah. Big plot to us, no one saw it coming. Um, I thought you guys were all chefs. Um, that's crazy. Uh, but yeah, 16 year old, but you can't even boil water. water. <laughs> yeah, come on, come on, just come wild. On, but bringing it back to Drake, I listened to the album. Um, because at the time it was like the whole which album's better, Donda or Certified Lover Boy? Um, I Donda like is Donda. Kanye West. Donda, yeah, Kanye. I didn't like Donda interesting i did not like it at all i heard like the first song and then i kept trying to listen and find a song i liked and i did not like any single song on there there's song with the weekend because i mean the weekend does not miss guys um i thought it was a good song and for the most part that's how i felt about donda is that i could listen it to it once but nothing is ever going to be on repeat and that was the same problem with certified lover boy for me is i listened to the album and one i thought one song was like just a complete joke where it's like Sing on me too. I thought like I thought that was a skit, and then it was serious. Um, yeah. I feel like people really hyped these two like these two albums up, and neither of them delivered for me. And I think they hyped them up yeah. because of the names of the artists. I don't know. Well, that's maybe media I, for you. Maybe I'm wrong. No, but that's that's just anything. I forgot what was recently released and it was like people were like oh my god this was so disappointing oh i think it was like some spanish song right and it had they had used part of the song and it had gone viral on tiktok as a sound and when the person that finally released the song people were talking a lot of like how it's not good like it, it was all that hype for that and i will say though this i like the song and what's the I, song it's like a spanish song just say it so the people uh, know uh, I can't even remember. I have to look for mm. it. But the point is that he basically released the heart of the song, like the heart of the of the work. Mm-hmm. You know how the people say like there's certain parts of each of a song. Oh, that's yeah. song that's yeah. like the yeah. heart of it. Yeah. You just that's the part you you wait for. Well, that's what mm-hmm. they all do. Every but artist then, does that. Yeah, and I guess it's that's so frustrating because it's like, like the movie I get trailer all excited problem. for a song to come out and then it comes out and I'm like the only part I like of it is the part that you yeah. Like, so. <laughs> you know it's also. Um, <laughs> A problem with this album for me, at least, which is why I don't know. If, I'm assuming that's the reason he's withdrawing is because he didn't get album of the year. Um, is <laughs> I'm a laugh that. right? He's just like I just felt sick and he's I feel like, like I'm so I'm upset right now. Yeah, <laughs> like, he calls me up now. He's like, "You lied on my name." Um, mm-hmm. Sued, the, right? <laughs> it's I just barely got money to. Pay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I do not have enough money to be paying. Like one million dollars, please. As I, I didn't plan like, for getting sued, guys. Um, <laughs> We're gonna use the um WMSC's um scholarship. Yeah. <laughs> God, please help your brother out. Um, <laughs> but certified lover boy, for those who don't know, had twenty one songs and. That none is way them, too that's, much. That's, that's the reason why I didn't know. Exactly. That's the reason why I didn't 21 know. songs and none of them hit. Mm. Like, and I think Donda was the same thing. Wow. Um, yeah, where it also was it. released like four different times too in different variations. Uh, oh, wasn't he teasing it? Like yeah, one song? and then it got leaked and then he released it, but then he changed it and then released it again. So my problem is just not every album, not every song you make in the studio needs to be released. And, and that's that- very much what Certified Lover Boat felt like is like he had all these songs like well i guess i'll release and you don't them. need to make every song exactly you know like if, just stick to the ones that are really good mm-hmm. and call it a day 
Like I'm cool with eight track album, but all eight hit. I don't yeah, need 21 yeah. and I have to scroll for a good one. Exactly. Uh, I listen to like the first two call it a day. Exactly. Yeah. If I stumble upon like the good mm-hmm. ones or you know what I do? This is why I don't listen to stuff when it usually drops. And I say this because I wait until it's been streamed a couple of times. And then when you, I use Apple music, I don't use Spotify. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so on Apple music, you see when you open the album you see the songs that are stored which is meaning that these are like the songs that are mostly mm-hmm. being played so then those are the ones i tend to focus on see if i like them see if i agree with the public and then call it a day but am i gonna listen through all 60 hours of the album absolutely not Thank you. Oh, oh okay so okay, before we on to the next story um the reason I be listening to whole albums is because a lot of times at Walmart, for those who don't know, you have very odd encounters. And I want to share this before we go on to our next story. It's because I think it's hilarious. So this guy comes up. He's like, hey, can I get roast beef, third of a pound? I'm like, cool, I got you. Are we back at Walmart? Yeah, you were back at Walmart. So I'm slicing this guy's stuff. And then all of a sudden he starts <laughs> singing Silent Night unprompted. I tell, like, And I'm just like, this Was is- Was it good? No. Oh. And he's like yelling it too. He's like, silent i'm like what is happening right now he said oh holy night for real and then he did the whole song and then i was like done before he finished and then he's still singing holding a bag of roast beef and we have this weird because i don't want to be rude and just like leave him because he's giving me crazy vibes and i don't mess with crazy so then why did you sit exactly well if i left what if he tried to like attack me I don't know why was he gonna attack you he because he's silent. crazy who he just was sings the calmest, silent night he was like singing that. the calmest holiday song possible right we're in we're, just because you we're didn't in walmart, walmart, we're in a walmart you guys Isaiah. weren't in the room and you weren't reading this man's you eyes work in crazy <gasps> this, and this and man's crazy. eyes told a whole different story I have mm, a, I'm just saying. For the end of the show, I have a crazy story of a crazy person that actually kind of creeped me out. But we're gonna save that for later. Okay. Just a little teaser. But you, you just reminded me with your, how you said that you were uncomfortable. I could, mm-hmm. yeah. And then that's why you just see. You, you could tell a lot yeah. by looking into someone's eyes. Yeah, guys. yeah, yeah. So I, I was gonna talk, and be like, why'd you, why'd you stay? But then I was like, no, I, I get it. And it reminded me of myself. I have one final question. Yeah. Did he stare you in the eyes the entire time he sang? Not song? the entire time, but when I stopped slicing, we were we locked eyes. You locked eyes for and a he long was time. Like, no, it was and loud. He was like, it was so loud. And then he left, right? And then I went to go take out the cardboard, and I see him in one of the aisles, and he's singing a different song. Oh, maybe so he was just, a maybe, jolly man. Maybe he just can't he keep the be. songs in his head. You know, he's just like, I have to let it out to the world. Oh, I wish he would stop. Because it made me uncomfortable. Well, and that's hard to do. I, I've I've seen a lot of weird things. I feel like that's not hard to do. To make me uncomfortable? Yeah. I don't know, man. I think it's not hard. All right. Uh, <laughs> you know what yeah, does it does make fine. me uncomfortable is maple syrup. I love maple syrup. I think it's overrated. <gasps> but Crystal, uh, can you? Yeah, you I'll, I'll read it. So Canada has forced us, or is being forced to use emergency reserve amid maple syrup shortage this is a tragedy it, uh, for some a shorter <laughs> and warmer harvest has caused problems for production in canada as suppliers struggle to keep up with rising global demand a surge in demand for maple syrup has forced get this the federation of quebec maple syrup producers that's a real thing to use strategic <laughs> res- reserves for the first time in three years the QMSP, which helps regulate and oversee production of maple syrup in their region, has been forced to respond over fears of supplies running low. They have released approximately half of its emergency reserve, which is roughly 22 million kilograms of syrup. That's a lot of syrup. That's a lot of syrup, y'all. But despite the move, Helen Normandine of the QMSP tried to calm fears down as there could be a shortage for customers. While speaking on a radio outlet, she said that why the reserves is made to never miss maple syrup and we won't miss <laughs> maple syrup. The Quebec producers uh, produces approximately three quarters of the world's maple syrup. Wow, good for Quebec. The combination of soaring global sales, a jump of more than 36% between the years, and an output of falling forward warmer and shorter harvest has created the problem. Lastly, maple trees can only be tapped when temperatures fall below zero degrees Celsius at night, but remain above freezing during the day. Guys, 
maple syrup issue is getting out of control. There's a shortage in a lot of things. Just yesterday, we saw in the news that the cream cheese, there's a cream cheese shortage in New York. <gasps> what? No. Oh, oh yes. yes. All yes. good things in life are having shortages. Yes. All good things must come to an end. And another, not, well, you know, my personal opinion that is also facing a shortage in some parts of the country is, um, what is it? Ammo? Ammo? Ammunition? You got a gun, Crystal? That's that's <laughs> nor that's nor here or there, but the, but what I'm saying <laughs> is that there's there's a shortage of I'm things. I'm feeling uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm feeling what I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying is that there's a shortage of a lot of things. And yesterday, I read in the news that cream cheese is one of them in New York, and then ammunition is. It's Maybe it's probably a good thing that we're running low on ammo here in the states for a little bit. Apparently, yeah. based on the report that I heard and read is that it's because people are frantically buying handguns and oh. are hoarding oh. uh ammunition i'm gonna start using maple syrup as ammunition <laughs> <laughs> i Just i love how, how syrup yeah, we can take a positive spin on right this. Uh, <laughs> you know it's, i feel like that would be better you know the world would be a better place if i just instead of bullets we had maple syrup and then instead of killing people they just got fed maple syrup isn't that it- is probably a very harsh punishment is to be fed maple syrup. No, I think like, that's a great, yeah, that's a great thing. And if you don't like maple syrup, then we can do like cream cheese. You know, that's not even like uh, you got. If you're, it's not maple syrup. You can't say cream cheese. Why can't it's one or the it's other? Two do different you, things. I'm gonna have two different ones, and I'll be like, "Do you like cream cheese or maple <laughs> syrup?" And then you're gonna be like, "Cream cheese," and I'm gonna be like, Doof. "No." At that point, I'm taking the syrup. Cream There's cream no cheese. way. I'm just saying. I'm not doing I cream cheese. I think the world would be a better place. Wait, you don't like cream cheese? cheese? Uh, no. So you don't like uh, maple syrup. You don't like oh my cream God, cheese. That's yeah. Wow. I like butter Ooh, I and honey. It, those um, are my replacements for those two. Butter, butter and honey. Butter and honey? Yeah. Isaiah. I love honey I'm officially pancakes. canceling Isaiah. Wow. <laughs> Isn't maple syrup like healthier? Than honey? Or just a healthy option for like. I don't know. Sweetie. Maple syrup? I, that's not healthy at I all. I really so. doubt it. Maple, maple syrup, syrup is so unhealthy. I, it's very. Like, have you yeah, seen? Yeah, probably. I don't know if Aunt Jemima is still a thing. Uh, I think they changed uh, names. They did change the name. Of I don't it. know the name, so apologies if I'm offending anyone. But yeah, that that is not healthy at all. No. Is that maple syrup? But maple syrup from Canada is fire. I got some from Canada one time. That's You've been crazy. to Canada? Yes, I have. I've been Where to Canada at? twice. Uh, I went to Niagara Falls, mm. and then I went to like Ooh. Toronto in the same. Yeah, I'm going to Toronto same. for yeah. Christmas break. Yeah, and then Canada. I and then I okay. went to. Okay. Yeah, we knew you had money. Okay. I didn't know you had Gina. We didn't know you had that type of money. All right. And then I went on a cruise, <laughs> and we went to Canada and Saint John, Saint Thomas, one of the two, something Saint. Little John. Little John. Yeah. yeah um. <laughs> But yeah, oh this... yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh so you guys are all fans of maple syrup, huh? Uh, yes. Okay. I yes. I think so. I don't know. You lollipop. think so? I don't... Next question. Ooh. Yeah, look for maybe in Canada. Canada. I will get yeah, those. they have like little lollipops that's just maple syrup. Wait, you know what I was just gonna say? Ew. It's so good. Wait, what? Like they like take like maple syrup and make them into lollipops. No, that's doing that, too much. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's so if you're good. gonna have syrup, at least put it on like pancakes, pancakes yeah. or French toast, waffles, or okay. oh, in a lollipop. No, it's doing the most. Stop being a hater, Isaiah. I'm sick of it. Oh, I like <laughs> things. I swear. I have yet to hear you say I like something. Okay, say say something that you like, and I'll and I'll confirm. Pepperoni pizza. I love pepperoni pizza. Well, that's good. Yeah. I'm glad you like something. Shout out pepperoni pizza. <laughs> Shouts out. Pepperoni. Yeah, but. <laughs> does Isaiah eat it? No. Yeah, I do. He's like in a super. I I I promise you. I feel like Isaiah never eats. What are you? Okay. I'm hungry right Hold now. On. Actually. Oh my god, yeah. my stomach. I'm my hungry stomach too. Is yeah. I'm, I'm, like, like, just just I'm about to eat pasta at 9 a.m. in the morning. Oh my god, that's, you that's should. A Such an interesting person. I'm I'm just saying. Like, wow. Oh, every little man. thing he says. We should just do a show about Isaiah. Just. There, there is a show. It's every Sunday at 9 a.m. No, no, no. Oh! Oh! Yeah. Just about you, know. though. Like, just, like, actually just, like... How weird you are, We you know? asked him questions. Um, yeah, you know, do it. Why not? I'm available. Hit my line. <laughs> he said, have a show and invite me over. Right? I'm going to. My, my, my show, now that I'm a DJ, I will. Hey, shout out Hey-o! to you, DJ. Um, uh, you can come on my show, and we'll just have a show dedicated to talking For about sure. You. you know what? I'll be on it. Yeah. You let me know when. Okay. Gina, you gotta. Are you doing a DJ stuff? Gina, am I doing what? 
a DJ set. No. <laughs> I guess that answers your question. All right. Gina's yeah. like, nah, not for no. me. Thank you, though. <laughs> All right, that's fair. Anyways, we're going to move on, guys, to everyone's favorite brand, which is Chanel. And they are being... Number five. Is it everyone's favorite? Chanel number I don't five. know. I just made that up. Number five? Number five. Who's, wait, you have a top five brand list? No, Chanel number five. Never mind. Uh, yeah. <laughs> perfume. 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 I'm lost, guys. Also, Scream Cream. Yeah. Yes. Reference. No, you, yeah. They, they, I'm gonna I, I knew, nice. and then they lost me. Yeah. <laughs> Very quickly. Um, it's okay. You guys just don't know. Man. <laughs> I wish I knew. Not um, this. Not, I was going to say something. One day. Mm. <laughs> Anyways, so hungry. back to Chanel. Luxury brand Chanel roasted online for a $1,025 advent calendar full of stickers and other trinkets. So the iconic fashion house Chanel is being dragged online after social media influencers unboxed the company's advent calendar and discovered it was full of trinkets that don't appear to be worth anything close to the $1,025 price tag. Yikes. The brand launched the advent calendar this year and the box of items numbered from 5 to 31, unlike traditional advent calendars, which start December 1st and are followed by new treats and discovered every day for the next 24 leading up to Christmas Day. Chanel starts on day five as a nod to the brand's iconic fragrance. Hey, there it is. See? Chanel number five. Chanel number five. Uh, the calendar <laughs> was released this year to celebrate the fragrance Centennial, which is released by the company's former co-founder Gabriel Coco. Oh my gosh, guys, ago. I found it. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I'm going to go and tell you some of the things that are inside the advent calendar, which have been sparking controversy as a sample of Chanel number no. five, a 100 milliliter version sells for $190. That is absurd. A 50 milliliter hand cream that retails for 70 bucks. A full-size Rogue Allure lipstick, which retails for $52. A full-size Rogue Poussin nail polish, which retails for $38. There's a ton of things that do not add up. Guys, would you ever even attempt to purchase? No, but no, you pay for the money. brand. Yeah. Yeah. You're paying for the brand. Also, who's buying? I got to be honest. People are still buying advent calendars. Yes, they're so fun. Really? I'm so upset I don't have one this year. Because because a lot of brands make fun ones and like you get things that you actually like in them. Mm. And not just like little, little... What brand would you get a calendar from? I don't know. This one girl I saw on TikTok the other day, she bought one from Ulta? And I was going to say, they have ones at Ulta where you yeah. can get, I think they give you... Yeah, and there was products. like some good stuff in it. She I just have a question. Yeah. Do you, have you ever had or have you ever either given to you or purchased an advent calendar? Never. That's why. No, you know, <laughs> no, 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 what? no. No, no, me, you know, me and my Hispanic things. I don't think it's a Hispanic thing. No. And I say that because I've never had one either. No, either I, gift like, it to me or give it to me. You don't need to get on that wave. I've so never fun. heard of it until I saw it like on a YouTube vlog. And I was like, why? Who's doing yeah, this? It's not a Hispanic thing. That's yeah, why. It might I got, be. I got a sock advent calendar. It's a go, white people, thing. It's a go white people thing. Yeah. Fun yeah. socks. Uh, yeah. Very. <laughs> I guess it very it's, it's a very white people <laughs> it's, it's whoa, a, whoa, whoa. Uh, yeah so I guess the more you know maybe you can give me one Gabby maybe I, maybe I will can I get the yeah. socks oh my God, but if it's not the socks yeah. ones are if fun. it's not Chanel I don't want it okay never mind I don't have that kind of money I don't even think I have that much money to my name like, actually <laughs> um but yeah the socks ones are fun I'm not gonna lie I enjoyed them because I like fun socks you know yeah fun. I like the fuzzy socks Fuzzy socks are nice. Yeah, I'm sure there's other the calendars for the fuzzy socks. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I can go with some fuzzy yeah. socks. Dropping, yeah. just dropping some ideas if people want to get me something for Christmas. Yeah, you know. Maybe someone with the uh -huh. Walmart discount. Well, I don't Ooh. get a discount. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even get a discount. You don't get a discount. Yeah. The pay is so good. No, they said okay. nope. The, they said mm -mm, not yeah, for you. For real. They That's just like. So sad. You know what's fun? What? Um. Crystal, you had a story for us, and we're close to the end of the show. Oh, yes, yes, I'd yes. I'd love to hear it. Um, it's kind of a creepy story. So um, in case you don't know, my mom owns a couple of stores, right? Over the weekend, I was at one of them, and a, a, a guy came in. He was older. He walks in, goes around the store, and goes, he approaches me and goes, I like your floor. <laughs> and so I looked at him, and I was like, what? And then he was just like, I like your floor. And then I just didn't say anything else. And then he was like, do you have candy? Goes to a candy section, grabs what he wants. And then he's like, do you ever get scared? What? What? Yeah. And I was like, excuse me? I'd be like, and no. He was like, do you ever get scared being here, being here by yourself? And I was like, no, because there's camera cameras all over the place. So no. And he was like, oh, 
He was like, you know what I mean. And then he proceeds to be like, I know I just made you nervous by asking you that. And and you know, what? We, what? yeah, and you know, like when you That's just so weird. as women, and I haven't experienced that. It's I, it's super, it's great. But if most women have experienced some sort of like harassment, some sort of like creepy men, creepy men, yes. And we all, I feel like most of us have all been there. And like, he just gave me major, major creepy vibes. He gave me vibes that he wanted to do something to me. And I got so uncomfortable and I got so like, like nervous. And I was just like, yeah, this, this is not it. This is not it. And I got nervous. And then, and then I hope I never get to see him again. But like, obviously when he was there, I acted all like nonchalant. Like I was like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not scared. Like, whatever. I was, I was, I was terrified. Oh my god, yeah. that'd be so Creepy. scary. Yeah, imagine someone telling you, like, do you get scared being by yourself? And like, mind you, this is an old white dude. Like, that's what he was. He was old. He had that other creepy. He had oh that crusty gosh. look to him and that that creep vibe. And it, it just made me uncomfortable. And then I was just like, yeah. And the worst part was that in this in one of the cities where my mom has her store, it's very like very very Hispanic, very, very Hispanic. There's you know the whole the good old gentrification people moving in but the most people are hispanic so when he walked in i was just so like stunned <laughs> you know that tiktok i um, sound that the woman was too stunned to speak yes. <laughs> yes. had, I, had i not felt in danger and like I, if i didn't act like i didn't care i i, I would have not said anything i would have been like <gasps> like uh, what did you just uh, say to yeah. me <laughs> It, it, it all started it started wrong when he was like i like your floor that's all yeah that's, that's like a weird from the way. jump that's like, a weirdo like, like what kind of floors do you guys have the, were they really nice Gabby, floors? it's some regular busted <laughs> <laughs> tiles that look like wood but it's not wood it was no. so weird it was just weird vibes that's but so funny <sighs> yeah weird people are weird that's what i'm trying to get at that people are weird, weird. Wow. and um i hope i wish it never happened to anybody else but you know that's not you know, but it happened happen. to you and we are so sorry that yeah. that happened yeah. that is really yeah. weird yeah, it really really is but yeah does anybody have a, something positive to end on a positive note uh, and not on, this? Yeah, on uh, that note it's the end of the buzz guys uh, that's been the Wednesday edition of the morning buzz that's the positive note uh, that's the positive spin on it it was great having everyone back in studio Crystal Gina great to see you Gabby I saw you last week but it's still great to see you this week yeah it better be uh, <laughs> uh, Rob Thank you for coming on the Wednesday show as well for your tour Thanks. support. Uh, tune in next week for the Wednesday show and tune in tomorrow for Thursday. Uh, until then, enjoy the rest of your day. We're almost done with finals here on WMC of Montclair and in Montclair State. I don't know what's going on anymore with this outro, so I'm just going to click the button and say goodbye for real. Bye. <laughs>